is going on, everybody? Uh, I am still sick, but I am here. Uh, I am going to be a little bit on the quiet side of things today, um, but that is what we're going to do, continuing on with the show. Uh, we have quite a bit to go through, so I'm just going to get right through it. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit faster of a show as well, too. Uh, there's a lot of topics that we're going to be talking about, a lot of things that are going on. Uh, I mean, there's a bloodbath going on with the EV, EV incentive right now from Uber. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that. Uh, we have a guest, uh, Ida Lee of Malda, coming on, talking about what's going on in MSP, uh, what's going on there. Uber and Lyft are claiming that they're going to leave. Let's see. Um, so he's going to be talking about a lot what's going on in there, you know, the veto, every override, all that good stuff, and what it means for drivers, all that. Then we're going to be talking about, is Uber shaving cancellation fees now? A uh, huge victory um, when it comes to drivers. Like I so said, that's what we're talking about. Um, can Lyft's upfront algorithm be fixed? What do drivers really want? We're going to be talking about that. Commercial insurance on Uber is still going up and hits a new high. Uber's changing EV incentive yet again. Uh, what should you do when you see a person for connect delivery? This is something that I came across the other day. Uh, so I want to kind of uh, share my thoughts on that. Um, and then why there has to be tougher background checks done for Uber teen drivers. Uh, and then how is the new Lyft 7030 guarantee going, the holes in the systems, and then end on some fakes. We got quite a bit going. Sergio, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, man. I'm glad we're back. Um, we missed you last week. I did a little impromptu live stream. It wasn't the same without you. So um, get well. Um, I mean, he's still sick. He's going to weather the storm today. And we probably will go quicker today than usual two hours. And we're not going to let anybody on. But uh, hopefully by next week, he'll be 100%. And we'll do our usual. So without... Uh, further ado let's bring the man of the hour who's become more famous than me now which is not sitting well with me uh <laughs> and here's uh Eid Ali what's going on Eid? <laughs> hey Sergio yeah good to see you again I mean yeah it's another beautiful day here uh in in Bloomington Minnesota yeah I mean we had you on a couple of months ago or maybe even less and then you know we were talking about Minneapolis, the ordinance and this and that. This time, you know, you clearly said you may have the votes to override the mayor's veto. And for people who don't know, who have been under the rock for the last couple of weeks of what's going on, you know, um, uh, Ida Lee is the president of MALDA. MALDA stands for Minnesota Uber Lyft Drivers Association. And he started like a little grassroots campaign with his few warriors. And then look where they are. They're 13 to 1500 strong members. And, uh, um, they had a very friendly city council last time. They got the votes for what they wanted, but then Mayor uh, Jacob Frey of Minneapolis vetoed it. Well, this time around, they passed it again. He vetoed it, but then this time they had the override votes. And congrats, my man. I mean, you know, one for the one for the good guys. Well, thank you, Sergio. That's absolutely um, you framed it, framed it quite well. So I really appreciate it. Uh, absolutely absolutely for showing up i know you're super busy you know my my google feed is full of your pictures <laughs> all i see all i see is you now <laughs> like, there you go. <laughs> I go you know what i mean i mean here you are on the shoulders of your uh constituents and uh and it says veto proof so look um obviously uber and lyft said uh, immediately after the override they said we're off we're out of here we're out of here uh may 1st right uh, first of all, and then they stand, they started sending, this is uh, our own contributor, Joe's, uh, Lyft app from that that says, you know, we're leaving, you know, we're going to, you're going to lose your flexibility. You're going to lose your freedom. So, um, we're here, right? The moment has showed up. Um, first of all, do you think they're going to leave? Well, that's a very good question. I, uh, I wish I know that, <laughs> uh, all I know is that they claimed that they're going to leave. Uh, but it's only them who will just kind of tell us if that is uh, accurate or not. But I, uh, I, uh, if I make a wild guess, I, 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 I don't think that they're going to go that far away. I mean, even if they do that, they may going to be away for maybe a couple of weeks or four weeks to see. I mean, how things settle. But um, that is my wild guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm going with that one. Uh, I'm actually still thinking. You know, between now and May 1, there's, uh, let's see, today is the 19th, so there's 40 days to go. Uh, a lot can happen in 40 days. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I mean, everybody can go and watch, and Eid is very busy these days. He doesn't have too much time, so I don't want to take, obviously, too much of his time. Um, if Uber and Lyft leave, 
right? I mean, look, we have to think of all stakeholders, obviously drivers, right? There are 10 to 12,000 drivers in Minneapolis or in the city, state of Minnesota. There was a governor's report that came out that put the numbers out. And it seems like a lot of these drivers are full-time, full-timers, like 30% or so. And they do 70% of the trips, just like, you know, it is in most cases, 2080 rule applies. Um, what is going to happen to these drivers? Eat? I mean, I know you're in touch with hundreds, if not thousands of them. Um, May, May 1st, assuming they leave, how are these people going to make a living? Well, that's a very good question. And fair enough. Yeah, uh, these drivers have been uh, doing this for quite some time for a living. And uh, the way uh, the, the condition that they are uh, at this moment uh, by not uh, making ends meet, uh, and, uh, and, and as, as you're well aware of, the report that was uh, released by the state was mentioned that uh, these, these drivers were getting paid, were getting uh, underpaid uh, for all of this time. So um, drivers are, are out there um, uh, trying to do their best and uh, working many, many hours so that they're able to just kind of at least um, get enough to feed their families. It's really tough. So um, in huge numbers every day, drivers come and tell me, is there any other opportunity? Is there any other place where I can go? Um, so, yes, um, I, I would say um, when tough times come, there's, there are always opportunities somewhere else. So um, if, um, if Uber and, and Lyft leave, uh, there are so many other folks who are going to step in. And I do have a very strong uh, feeling that um, that 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 uh, some other uh, entities will just replace. Uh, I'm not going to say that they're going to be taken care of 100%, but at least way better than uh, 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 than what what the situation is now. Yeah, that's a great segue to my next question. Is that I mean, I'm personally familiar with at least two companies who are already operating in the U.S. in different cities, different states, obviously. Um, I mean, they are definitely interested in stepping up and taking some of the slack. And I'm sure your full time drivers in your community would be interested in, you know, at least signing up and giving it a run with these companies. So there is a backup plan. There is an alternative. Right. I mean, I do understand Uber and Lyft leaving. Right. I mean, you know, they're, they're the two main players as far as ride share is concerned in your market. Um, but these companies um, can step up and take some of the slack. I'm not saying at the scale that Uber and Lyft is. Would your members or your uh, community be interested in uh, collaborating with some companies like that? Well, uh, there's a huge interest uh, among the drivers and also some local folks who are also trying to help. And uh, yes, um, like I said, uh, uh, the, the demand is there. The drivers are just trying to, they kind of feel that they're liberated, by the way. So they think that the, 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 the situation that they are in at this point moment um is it's not one that is sustainable and uh they, they, they're expecting to just uh kind of go anywhere where the thing is going to be uh it's going to deliver way better than 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 uh, those two giant uh corporate corporations so um i i think there's a good chance that uh some uh, other uh entities or companies will step in and uh, the drivers are ready yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, you know, and, and I know I'm going to try to help you guys with all that. But um, here's the thing. Um, you know, we also have to think about the riders, right? I mean, look, there, I, I understand the rich folks who go, you know, to bars and high end restaurants and airport trips and things like that. They can afford to pay a little bit more. Right. Um, personally speaking. OK, I, I'm sure you have as well. I've read all 70 pages of that report that came out that was commissioned by the governor. Um, so Uber and Lyft are saying that 89 cents a mile and 49 cents a minute is equal to minimum wage in uh, Minneapolis, which is 15-ish, 1570 range, right? So I told Uber and Lyft, I go, well, what about a profit margin? I mean, you guys have a profit margin. You charge 100 for a trip, pay 50 out, right? That's your profit margin. How is that that, you know, they're, why do you think they're resisting so much that dollar forty and 51 rate? Because that's the profit margin. That's as far as I'm looking at it. Well, again, another wild guess is that maybe um, um, they think that uh, based uh, comparing to their market here uh, to the other uh, large markets they have else, uh, elsewhere, that um, if they accept the demands of the drivers here in Minnesota, 
then what's going to happen in those other markets, uh, large, mar uh, uh, large markets that they have? So it's like they are just trying to say, OK, um, uh, if we accept their demands, I mean, it's not going to be uh, <laughs> it's not going to be uh, helpful for them in those other bigger uh, markets. So at least they are, um, I, I would say, uh, they're, they're gambling on, on, on this. But I'm going to tell you, um, before prior prior um, prior to their arrival here in, in Minnesota, there was a very vibrant uh, cab industry uh, that was taking care of uh, uh, um, all residents here in Minnesota. I'm not saying that they were perfect, but at least, I mean, they were taking care of a uh, majority of the needs of the residents. So they're standby. I have had a conversations with them. There's so many other folks uh, who are interested in, there are some co-ops. So I think uh, between uh, the cab industry and those other new entities uh, that are willing to just jump into this market, we'll be, uh, we'll be taking care of at least over 50% of uh, what Uber and Lyft were covering. Yeah, I agree with that. And also, I mean, I am aware that there are some um, <clears throat> some legislation being introduced at the state level to proceed the city ordinance. Um, I think we talked about that. We agree that that's not going to fly as easy as uh, people think it's going to be uh, because nobody likes to get slapped down uh, by their bigger brother. Um, uh, here's a question for you. We'll squeeze that in, but then I know you got to go. A question for E. Does Minneapolis think thing account for different tiers, X, XL, SUV, Black, Lux, etc.? Could you reframe that question for me if you don't mind, please, Sergio? Yeah, so, you know, there's tiers at um, Uber, right? Uber X, Lyft Standard, which is the lowest tier, right? And then there's higher tiers, XL, which is for six six people, SUV, which is the luxury division. Um, does that um, include, like, your your rates, $1.40 and 51 that the city passed, correct? That's for the X, X meaning the lowest tier level as far as service is concerned. Are there any other numbers that are being talked about for the higher levels? Because as we know, Uber pays more for XLs and SUVs and Lux and things like that. No, I mean, the, other, the only conversation we had around uh, the city ordinance or what it is, the, the, the state level legislation is all about the X. Uh, nothing okay. else has been talked about, yeah. Okay, so that's about 95% of the market in most markets anyway. Um, I get that. Um, do you think the pushback with these companies is because they're afraid of misclassification, that this opens the can of worms, that ultimately, you know, they don't want any employees? Uh, is that is that the play? I mean, is that what they're afraid of? Well, I, 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 I wish I am the, the right person to answer that. Uh, I don't represent uh, Uber and Lyft, but... What I'm thinking is this model we have here in Minnesota uh, is not the first one. Uh, Seattle has one, and I mean, yep. and, and, and and we don't see that fear. Uh, but maybe if if that is their argument, I believe um, I, I don't see any merit because drivers want to be what they are now. They are not asking to become something different. It's all about the race and the treatment that uh, that they're uh, undergoing now that needs to be uh, addressed. Uh, other than that, uh, they're not demanding something else. So in terms of the independent contractors, that's something that Uber and Lyft were cooking lately, but I, I don't see um, anything that is pushing to the other end. Okay, um, so we have a couple more minutes. I Look, um, I, I am a friend of Malda. I'm a driver's advocate uh, because we've, uh, we've become friends over the last couple of months since I first interviewed you. Um, do you think there is a chance for cooler heads to prevail and everybody to sit down at the table and talk and to come to some resolution be between now and uh, May 1? Or we're just going to count the clock and just count it out and, you know, new companies come in, sign drivers, sign riders, and then we go? Or what do you think is going to happen? I mean, I know your crystal ball is, is better than mine, I'm pretty sure. Well, thank you so much, Sergio. You're a good friend. Yes, absolutely. And, and I enjoy your, your conversation and your... Uh, uh, input and uh, but yeah to just answer your question uh, I am always open to uh, negotiations and uh, uh, getting everybody everybody around the table uh, have a very decent uh, conversation of how uh, things can be resolved and uh, that's what I have been seeing, seeing ever since day one so uh, if we get um, partners who can uh, um, 
take the same dance with us. I mean, I, I, I would love to see that, yes. Yeah, are you listening, Josh? <laughs> Josh. <laughs> uh, you know, see what I mean? Okay, let's go. Uh, let's make this happen. But uh, look, uh, is there any parting words? Do you have anything else to add to it? I mean, again, you know, my hat's off to you guys, okay? You followed a simple model. You started this movement with a few drivers. Look where you guys are, right? And, you know, I get a lot of emails, by the way, after your show that you were on a couple of months ago. We want to do the same. How do we do it? I'm like, it's easy. The guy just started talking to some drivers, putting some the community together, and look where they are, right? It doesn't happen overnight, but you were able to do it. Seattle was able to do it. It's doable, people. I mean, all I can say is it's doable. Um, so in parting words, you know, give us some wisdom. And and obviously, I'm going to be in touch with you, but uh, I'm here to help you and Malda any way, shape, or form I can. And uh, we'll definitely keep in touch. But um, give us a couple of minutes in closing um uh you know and and we'll say goodbye to you well sergio thank you so much it's an opportunity that i, I am here uh, to uh kind of share this um um uh, wonderful journey that i have been for the last two years with you and also with your uh, audience and uh yes um we care about the drivers uh we have nothing against uh the uh, tncs whether it is well, Lyft or Uber, I have a very good relationship with both of uh, Joshua and uh, Josh and, and also Brent. And uh, we have spent plenty of time uh, last year sitting next to each other, talking and bringing some solutions on the table. So uh, we, we're we not uh, foes to each other. We're not enemies to each other. I mean, I know that they want to just bring um, something that they represent on the table. I'm bringing something that I represent on the table. So it's all about that. We just kind of dance the same dance and understand the concerns uh, from every angle. Uh, that way, I believe that it's, uh, it's, it's a way that we can uh, bring something that will be helpful for both uh, parties. Um, and I'm, I'm uh, optimistic. So um, uh, I want Uber and Lyft to stay in the market and just do what they were doing. Drivers to work for them, um, residents to get um, the service that they were getting. But also I want to make sure that the drivers are being treated fairly and they're getting paid a uh, fair wage and livable wage. And that's all we're just trying to make sure that, hey, Uber and Lyft, listen to the drivers. Let's do things together. Let's just get something that will be a win-win situation for everybody. And I'm hoping that sometime in the near future, we'll, we'll, we'll get way out to just kind of uh, resolve some of these uh, critical issues. Absolutely. So I'm actually, you know, hopefully one day I'll meet you in person, you know, as opposed to on Zoom calls. Um, you know, I, I mean, if, again, you know, I'm with you guys. So whatever you need from me, you let me know. I'm a phone call or an email away. Uh, I think it's a doable situation. I think everybody has to give in a little bit and then uh, we can solve this problem. And then, um, you know, everybody wins. I mean, that, because nobody wins if Uber and Lyft leaves. I mean, uh, as for, that's my opinion anyway. Uh, but look, um, thank you so much for showing up. I know you're busy. Um, I really, truly appreciate you, you doing this. And uh, let's keep in touch. Thank you, Sergio. And you have a wonderful day. Okay. Take care, man. Thank you, Sergio. Okay. You too. All right. Very interesting what's going on there, for sure. Well, Josh, are you listening? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, time to sit, Josh. Let's go. And then don't bring your Prop 22, by the way, like you did today in Massachusetts. I watched. I was like part of a hearing for three hours. Bro, um, they have five five Prop 22 clone, clones on the ballot. Five. Not one, not two, not three, not three, oh, five. And, and I'm going like, if I, I wish I was part of the hearing, but hopefully maybe next one. Uh, Prop 22 is not something uh, Minnesota drivers want either, um, you know, because a lot of people don't know the intricacies of Prop 22, but I've spoken to Eid. He goes, no, no, we're not going to. If they come to the table with Prop 22, Josh, uh, they're not going to take it. But anyway, so uh, let's go quickly today. Um, what do we got? What do we got first going? Oh, we got a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, you got Curbivore coming up. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Um, um, do we have some screenshots on that one? 
Uh, okay, so here's okay. You, all you guys, all LA drivers, or South Orange County, Ventura County, Inland Empire. I mean, Jesus, right? We're, we, I think we have over hundred thousand drivers in LA County, or eighty thousand just Uber drivers. Look, free food, free drinks. Come take pictures. We can do our tests, EV shaving tests. We can all kinds of tests that we do. Put our phones down. Have lunch. There is a driver power hour be between 12.30 and 1.30 on Friday. This event is on Friday, March 29th, coming up. Not this Friday, but coming Friday. Um, go to that first page, curbivore.co. The link should be in the show notes. Click on the link. There is a register tab. Click on register right there. See where it says register now and save. Once you click on that, it's going to put out, it's going to take you to a website called Eventbrite and put code S-E-R-G-I-O-5, no space, all one word. You will get a ticket for $5. Usually they're like $99 to $279 uh, for the big wigs. But we're, you know, $5 tickets you can't beat. Uh, it's in downtown LA in the arts district. So parking should be a lot easier because last year it was in a hellhole um so come meet me you know there's going to be other uh, influencers like luis berti or delivery tv i think pedro is going to be there from pedro dordash santiago i'm pretty sure but anyway that's not the point the point is come let's talk let's talk some shop let's meet in person five dollar tickets sergio s-e-r-g-i-o five but you have to register you can't just show up at the door on friday or you're driving by and then uh, buy a ticket there and get in you have to online register it takes like two minutes so let's have a show of force. Let's let's have a few hundred drivers show up. Harry's paying for it. I'm not paying for it. Hey, come on down. There you go. And I'm, you know, and and once you do it, pass it to your community. Post it on Facebook. Post it on your social media. Five dollar ticket, Sergio Five. All right. Let's move on. Let's talk about uh Uber shaving cancellation fees now. Yeah, I got this bunch of times. Well, two weeks ago, Chris, since we didn't do it last week. Um um, so look, I mean, you know, I, I love my audience now. Seriously, I, you know, we used to get emails that were all garbled. I had to look at each one, figure out what's going on, you know. And now, the audience learned that when they, when I send Sergio, by the way, if you guys want to send me stuff, email address is Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. I literally am up to like close to 2,000 emails a week now. Honestly, I love what I'm doing. I read each one. I respond to each one. It's getting more delayed now because I may need an assistant pretty soon uh, <laughs> just to read the emails. But long story short, look at this. Look at the way they send it to me now, Chris. How beautiful is this, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, easy. Yeah. I mean, easy. All, all you have to do is look at it. You don't even have to read it. So this, I was received this. I've been receiving these emails for a couple of weeks. Um, and, and I mean, this is just amazing, right? So minimum cancel trip. Uh, fee before 229-2024. Um, first of all, Will, Connor, thank you. Sako, oh, well, Sako Bimb, thank you. Um, thank you for the super sticker. Sakar Bimb, sorry, my glasses are shit, as usual. So minimum canceled trip fee before 229-2024. 491, drive, and Uber takes their cut. And, and, you know, driver received 375, right? I'm like, okay, that was 375 on Uber was our cancellation, and now it's two dollars on Lyft, right? Unless it's a scheduled trip. Either Uber lowered the cancel. I'm trying to find that out from Uber, but a couple of my contacts are off. So I'm going like, uh, can I can we like confirm this? Did you guys lower Uber? Did you lower the cancellation fee? This is not that difficult. Just send me an email saying, yeah, we lowered the cancellation fee on the passenger, because otherwise. This is called cancellation fee shaving now, Uber, just like with the EV shaving, just like with the upfront shaving, just like mileage and trip shaving. And the, and the audience member who caught this in his city and sent it to me, now it says customer price up top 450. It looks like they lowered it by 41 cents, or did they? And obviously, Uber takes their 25% cut-ish, somewhere in that range, and the cancellation fee is lower now. Now, you guys, mind you, this is after uber increased the wait time from five minutes to seven minutes right chris i mean that's like all right and i should actually get paid the whole fee actually i don't even know why uber is taking a cut but that's not the point 
So Uber, we're watching. Again, we're dealing with the 20 cents, and here's another one. This time, Ryder canceled, and then poor guy went to Uber support, right? And, of course, doesn't get anywhere. Um, here's another one, 332. So um, willy-nilly, Uber is putting out a cancellation fee out now from 375 to 350 to 348. I mean, I'm not sure, Uber. Um, again, we're, if we're doing this with 30 cents at a time, you guys remember, we're going to talk about the EV thing. How many millions did that cost you guys? Please stop doing this nonsense. We're going to bust you. We're going to catch you. I mean, our audience is going to catch you, and they're going to send it to me, and we're going to talk about it, and you're going to watch it, and you're going to go, oh, it's a glitch. Come on now. Let's not play the games, okay? So, Uber, let me know if you guys change the fee, and after you're cut, that's why the cancellation fee is low, or are you shaving? One or the other. It's a simple answer. Anyway, so please watch out for this. Watch for your cancellation fees, people. If you are um, seeing this, send it to me, Sergio at the rideshare guy .com. The The more, the better. Yep. Yeah, just actually, like the uh, the EV incentive that we're going to be talking about in a couple of minutes, That was I sent you that, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're like, I got 20 emails like, within, what, half hour or something? So it's like once you get the news, it goes. Yeah, that's a good point, Mike. Um, we're on it as we're always on things. Um, you know, the Tulsa situation also, you know, we need to do a show about a segment in the show in the future about that. You know, mm -hmm. when Uber sends you guys a trip on period two, which is you accept the trip, you're on your way to pick up the passenger, Chris, it's not counting in the tolls that you have to go through towards the passenger. It only pays you the tolls with a butt in the back seat. Now, what about mm -hmm. me eating that toll? on p2 on my way to the passenger but we need to do a segment on that that's for the future you Relax. guys look, man you know you guys need to look into every single receipt i mean i know it's a pain in the ass i know it shouldn't be like that but hey to you maybe 30 cents it doesn't matter but 30 cents times 2 billion trips is hundreds of millions of dollars okay i mean mm -hmm. anyway so you guys send it sergio at the rideshareguy.com if you see this cancellation thing especially if you're seeing cancellation fees less than 375 that's what it should be on uber after seven minutes now. If it's not, please send it to me. So there you go. All right. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, can Lyft's upfront algorithm be fixed and uh, what do drivers really want, which is a poll that we did here on RSG uh, yeah. recently. So um, pretty yeah, eye-opening. We, right we did a poll. We'll show the poll. Okay. Lyft, we've talked about this. This is not going fast enough. This, this okay, upfront fares, first of all, we did a poll a couple of months ago, and, and, and we'll show a different version of that poll in a minute. Um, okay, here's the trip on the left. Please take a look, okay? Um, this trip originally was priced, upfront fare was $43.33. This driver got a haircut, okay, of almost 25%, maybe more, 26%. Why? And then the, 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 the point up top says, your pay decreased because the drop-off changed. I know exactly what happened. I've spoken to this driver. He's from L.A. He was taking somebody from LAX to Disneyland. Lyft's map right now is so disorganized. When the upfront came in, it had a certain route. Well, this driver knew Disneyland better than me. He says, Serge, there is an entrance to this hotel. All I did was just took the shorter route to the hotel because Lyft uh, nav wants me to go all the way around the block. Well, sure enough, what happened is that the trip got cut short by literally, look at this, 36.68 36 miles. The trip got cut short by less than a mile and, and by five minutes, right? Literally like 3%-ish. And then the, the fare got cut by 30% lift. This is bullshit. Because look, you can cut it. If your algo can read to cut the fare this much, it should also read because the next few screenshots, they're going way over, right? You guys need to come clean with this, Uber and Lyft. Uber, Lyft says significantly longer. What is that? What is that? I don't know. Significant to me is one-tenth of a mile. And pretty soon, I'm telling you, Lyft, I'm going to tell people to kick the rider out of the car when the upfront estimate is hit because they know they're not going to get paid afterwards. They're not going to be an upward adjustment even if they go to black hole Lyft support and bang their head into the walls. Here's another one. On this one, the trip got... Um, he got paid more, right? But look what happened, Chris. Look at this. Lifts uh, in the third screenshot. We're going to look at the one uh, to the left of it in a second. Um, it, let's look at the third screenshot. For, well, actually, no. Let's look at the second screenshot. 
His upfront was $38.10 and lift upward adjustment was by $5 or $5.5, okay? So he went up to $44.38, right? But look at the estimate and the actual. This chip was supposed to go, right, on an estimate for P2 and P3, it was supposed to go an hour and 12 minutes and 49.26 miles. This is happening quite often. I'm seeing this quite, when the ping comes in, that's what you're presented with, right? But when you start the trip, the truth is coming out, okay? This driver drove, instead of an hour and 12 minutes, he drove an hour and 13 minutes and 65 miles. That's 16 more miles, okay? Now, on the trip on the left, the trip got cut short by less than a mile. Lyft hit him with 30% deduction. On the trip on the right, this trip went, 16 miles over with about the same time duration and he only got adjusted by five bucks six five and a half bucks why lift what's happening here i mean he's getting hammered if he goes short by a little bit but then you should have adjusted the trip a lot more and again significant is this the significant part 16 miles i have to extra to drive only for five bucks what is that that's like 30 cents a mile i'm like what, what are we doing here right so that's why upfront needs an overhaul. And lastly, the one, the two on the right. Okay, here's the ping screen. He even took a, this driver. I mean, they're so good now that they know what they're doing. The ping, this is the perfect bait and switch, Chris. The ping is coming in um, at uh, um, three minutes to pick up and an hour and 36 minutes to destination, 125 miles. And he took it, um, $78.29, okay? Um, and then on the right, you guys can see estimated and actual lift lifts net lift offers are so far off now when it comes to mileage, it's not even funny. And he's very lucky, by the way, I told him that you didn't get dinged by like 30% haircut on this because the trip took literally 40 miles less, right? So here's the problem on the lift acceptance screen, right? This is the ping. Lyft is showing the map. Do you guys see the route he took? It's the exact same route, right? But Lyft overestimated this by 40 miles. So Lyft, something is super wrong with your upfront algo. And this is also happening on trips. Let's say if I, I'm in LA, I pick up at LAS going to Hollywood. There's four ways or three ways actually to go to Hollywood. Lyft is showing me a route that's literally 24 miles. It says 16 miles and maybe the upfront is paying like that. So I told the driver, you're, first of all, you shouldn't have accepted this trip, but then it turned out okay, I guess. But um, 125 miles, it's coming on the pink screen, but the actual route is only 82 miles. And I, again, I told him he's like super lucky that he didn't get dinged by 50% on this trip. He could have, they probably could have cut it, you know, upfront fare by 40, 50%. So lift, huge problem with this, huge. We need to get paid for every single tenth of a mile and we need to get paid for every minute the extra we drive i did this test chris we, we talked about it i i did 14 trips i drove 22 minutes and five and a half miles extra on the house this is not a charity lift just like you guys want to be profitable we need to be profitable we need to get reimbursed upfront fares significant needs to go away and we need to have clear guidelines if the trip goes over every minute we got to get paid and we did our survey and this this by now i think has over 3,500 votes. Um, how should Uber Lyft drivers get paid? Right? And I mean, there is no question what you guys want, right? You guys want back the time and distance rate card, right? With the upfront information. And I was one of those people who clicked that one. Um, I mean, Lyft, is there a question? Why don't you run your own polls with your million drivers? Let's see what they want. This upfront fare, unless this adjustment is done correctly on the upside, is garbage it really is we don't need to kick the passenger out when the estimate is done so here you go that's what the crowd wants and we're going to work on this and i know we are i'm in touch and we have to fix this i don't want anybody to drive for free just simple as that yep all right let's move on let's talk about the uh, commercial insurance still going up this is a new record that we've seen and i'm sure we'll probably see a new one soon too yeah. Um, oh, um, actually, please watch this on Thursday uh, with Jeffrey right here. Um, I did a behind the wheel today. You guys can see it on Thursday at 8 a.m. 
Rides is another company that's a rideshare company who's really willing to step up. If Rides can get it set up in Minneapolis, their platform is old school, miles and minutes, rate card, beautiful. So they could be set up. And yes, yes, Jeffrey, we're, we're, we're actually talking about that. Um, so um, the <laughs> we're talking like <laughs> Chris. Um, okay, the, the right, the left screenshot is the screenshot of the trip, right? We're done with the trip. You earn more for the trip because you got a wait time fee. That's not the point we're trying to raise here. Um, what is the uh, commercial insurance on this trip? 38, uh, where is it? 38.55. Okay, so so uh, actually we got them all. Okay, the, the, you have one more of these, right? Yep. That was okay. the highest that we had. And then there's another one that's even higher now. There's $50 one now. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. People, look at this, people. Please look at this. Uber. Even if you're telling me that all of that is commercial insurance, I'm not buying. Okay. So this is California. Uber says California, full of uh, ambulance chasers. We're in huge trouble. Our rates keep going up. Okay. Six months ago, not more than that. Six months ago, there is a booking fee that's charged to the consumer on each trip. Okay. That's a fact. And that driver does not touch that. Here's what's happening. That what that had a cap between three minimum, ten maximum. Okay, then it went went from three minimum to twenty. Then it went out of control. This is one of the last ones I got. Here's a trip, thirty four point three miles, two hours and twelve minutes, or ninety four miles. I can't even see now, but that's not the point. Uh, Look 30, at the right screen. How many miles? Thirty four. 34 miles, okay? 34 miles, 2 hours and 12 minutes. That's what happens in LA traffic. Look at the right side, people. Okay, so look at the, this is the breakdown. Passenger paid 153, 154. Driver got 72. Um, dollars per mile is good by hour, probably not so much, but then it is what it is. There is a $79 um, California Prop 22 benefits, which the consumer is paying for it. It's not the it's not Uber paying out of their pocket for Prop 22, although they did say they were going to. Here's the here's the big one: fifty dollars Uber. Fifty dollars. It's over a That's dollar a mile. Dollar and a half a mile. Insurance. Uber is paying Chris dollar and a half a mile. That's for, insane for commercial insurance. What the f Uber? I mean, fifty dollars. I, I think there's some cooking of the books. Well. I, I need it. I mean, look, okay. So, you know, you know how Uber is in Minneapolis complaining that the rates will go up, the rates will go up, right? And that's going to be paying more to the drivers. Look at this. $50 this rider paid for commercial insurance for P3, 50 for a single trip Uber. We can buy our own insurance and be more profitable. Why don't you give me that 50 bucks? Let me go buy my own commercial yeah. insurance. If I'm doing 150 trips a week, I I don't know or what's what's happening here, right? And and then um, there is a 10 cent city fee. So that that way, Uber makes their take rate look like it's only 31 dollars, right? So Uber calculates it this way. This number, by the way, people was capped at 10 six months ago. Then it went to 20. Then we lost track. Now I'm seeing 50 for a single trip. No, I'm not buying it. And that $50, by the way, is the same number as the booking fee. How much of that Uber is actually commercial insurance? It can't be 50. At your scale, at your size, you cannot be paying $50 for this no. trip for commercial insurance. Just can't be. I mean, it just can't be. So we need answers. I'm digging into this. I really am really, really, really hard because look, if this driver had his own comer or her own commercial insurance, okay, in California, probably about a thousand to twelve hundred a month. But if uh, just pay me this, pay me this fifty Uber. Don't charge the passenger that way. The fares will go down, and I'll make more. I mean, there has to be something happening here that that is a solution. I mean, I'm not saying they're double dipping, Chris. Okay, but the rider fares are going up because of that fifty. So what the breakdown of that 50 is not clear to me. I'm saying that it's not only commercial insurance. I'm saying it's booking fee, credit card fee, 
and commercial insurance. And according to them, clearly, I've been told, all of it is commercial insurance, Serge. Mm. You guys believe it? You guys believe that? I don't believe it anymore. I, I, I find I, it a bunch of bullshit. 50 bucks for 31 miles, bro? No, that I, makes I no sense. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So there we are. But uh, yeah. Unless Whoever's somebody's like that bad at accounting. Bad accounting, shenanigans, all kinds of things could possibly, possibly. I don't know. So, yep. yeah. Um, look at this. Check the Mr. Gambit. He's a great LA driver. Just think 10,000 people paying. Well, it's more than that. Uber, Mr. Gambit. That's not the one. Wherever, where did he go? Anyway, uh, right here. Uh, just think 10,000 people. Are victims of, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, we, we did the back of the envelope calculations. We're good at those things. You know, we said um, Uber did 2.7 billion trips last quarter, okay? 60% uh, plus was in the U.S., all right? So let's say billion and change. I don't know, billion and eight, 1.8 billion. The minimum commercial insurance in California on Uber, and Uber's top market is California. 25% of the revenue comes from California. There's a $3 minimum on that, and hundreds of millions of trips a quarter? times three hundreds of millions is that why you're paying in premiums i'm not buying it i really am not so we need to figure this out this could be a huge story this could be a another prop 22 story i mean I, I, at their scale how are you you guys paying so much for insurance I, I, and we know that insurance is like swiss cheese we had brian on two weeks ago three weeks ago he said the driver is not even covered <laughs> in p3 i was shocked that million dollars he goes is for the other side it's not for the driver I'm like, wow. And the $2,500 deductible. I think I can get similar or better insurance if Uber floats me that 50, that booking fee, you know? Mm -hmm. Give me that 50. Give me that 50. You know, uh, I'll make more money. Uh, that way you don't have to raise rates. You don't have to get into all these Minneapolis legislation, all that stuff. There has to be a way. We have to test that out. I agree. I think that would be a good <laughs> idea. Yeah, I think so. All right. All right. So next. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about the Uber changing the EV incentive. Uh, that's going to piss off a lot of people because you would be able to get up to $4,000 extra a year. And uh, that's what they were doing in 22 and 23. Then good old 24 comes around and uh, they decided to change it where they're only going to allow 1000 uh, for the first quarter. And now that the first quarter is almost over, uh, when it comes to April 1st, I believe it's April 7th, um they're going to now change it oh no i'm sorry april 11th um they're going to be changing it where now you have to give 200 rides to get 210 dollars every 30 days so guess what that comes to a 37 percent haircut right there you were making four thousand if you gave four thousand rides now if you give and max out 200 every month for the next you know year for a year it brings it down to 25 20 and so you just lost a fifteen hundred bucks. Bye bye. Yeah, I look. I actually, Chris texted me this. He had it either from uh, Reddit or whatever. He saw it. He texted it to me, and literally within five minutes, my start of my phone started going off the deep end as usual. I had like fifty emails. Serge, look. I'm like, yeah, yeah. What? Well, I don't have an EV. Look, I feel for you guys. Um, well, well, Connor's pretty pissed about it because he's got the Tesla. He's got, yeah, bro. He's got an EV. I mean, look, all the people who bought EVs, who got EVs. In fact, today's be behind the wheel, Jeffrey um, from Austin, Texas. Oh, Wednesday. He Thursday. just bought an EV, bro. He just oh, bought one like a month ago. I'm like, wow. So, look, um, cuts a cuts a cut. I mean, uh, I don't know what else to say. And what's, who's going to get hurt the most in this? Uh, probably... The part-timers who are doing maybe 30, 40 trips. Because, look, you have to do 200 a, 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 a month. That's 50 a week. Um, basically, on this one, I told Uber this already. I emailed them. I go, oh, you guys are copying Lyft now. You know, Lyft has the 50 trips for 80, 50 for 150 if you're grandfathered in for EV, right? So Uber looked at it and he goes, uh, yeah, we like that. Let's just do 200, though. I'm like, yeah. okay, and let's cut it. Okay. Big. So 4,000 to 2,400 is going to be, yeah, he's, Chris is right, 37%. Um, 
This goes to show we did we talked about this when Lyft got rid of Lux. You guys have no control. Okay, if you bought an EV because of the four thousand, counting your four thousand for the next three years, oh, I'm gonna get twelve thousand back and pay for it. This is the right chair game for you guys. That's why this legislation stuff is happening. Okay, we have no control, and we need some control because if you made a huge investment, bought a Tesla or any other EV for that dollar credit, you just got killed for like fifteen hundred bucks a year, and the part timers definitely got killed. I mean. If you're doing 20 trips a week, 30 trips a week, you ain't getting the dollar. Mm -hmm. And um, what, okay, Chris, do you think uh, this is going to incentivize people now from this point on, go buy EVs and electrify the whole fleet by 2030? I think this is going to kick them in the foot even more. And uh, 2030 was their goal to have the entire fleet electrified. And that sure as hell is not going to happen. Yeah, there's a great comment right there. Uber CEO has been emphasizing their commitment to such. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, they are right. decreasing. Yeah, uh, great, great comment right there. And so don't rush to buy EVs, please. Yes, I agree with uh, Money Talk with Tristan, who has his own channel, good channel. Yeah, Prius is still the king for me. Especially, not a new one. Uh, new ones are expensive. Like The best car right now to do ride share with is like a seven, eight-year-old Prius, pretty much. That's it. That's where we are. Um, but yeah, I mean, bad news. Again, we don't want to give bad news, but news is news. 1500 is 1500, you know, and um, we'll see. You know, I mean, some driver to me actually said, you know, I, I like drivers who are glass half full, Chris. He goes like, well, I'm still, you know, they don't have to pay anything. Actually, that's well, a good, they, they don't that's have to pay point. anything, but the adoption rate would be even less. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, so... The CEO is saying, he, remember he was in Davos and we did like a little bit of a fun clip out of it that he was hanging out with billionaires. He was asking the government, please, you know, where's my money? Um, yeah. Because we can't adopt fast enough. So whoever genius came out with this at Uber, oh, let's cut it by 37%. I think, the, you know, <laughs> it'll incentivize drivers to switch to EVs to do trips oh, for yeah. 50 cents a mile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not, uh, who comes with this Uber? Who comes up with this stuff? I mean, I know you guys don't have to pay anything, right? But when you want, when you're saying publicly that we want to incentivize drivers, you want to go to all EV fleets. How's this going to do any of that anyway? So I don't know. I don't. It's I don't not know. going to. So I mean, we're already in 2024. We're we're almost done with the first quarter, and uh, yeah, I don't I don't see it happening. I do not see it happening anytime soon. I, I see it getting pushed I, I back do. and pushed back, and it's just going to be one of those. You know, honestly, I think the EV is like the CFL. It really is. I think there's going to be something that's going to be coming. Like you had the, <coughs> you had the incandescent for how long? And that's, that's your ice car. Then you have this EV come in. Everybody's like, oh, you got to get the EV. You got to get it. We're, we're going to get rid of gas powered cars, all this bullshit. And, you know, it's, it's like the CFL. The CFL came and, you know, the LED came, what, six, seven years after you can't even get a CFL now. So yeah. I, I have a feeling yeah, that I, there's some other technology. That's um, gonna be gonna that's be a great comment right there, Joe Driver. I implore all drivers not to be, yeah, I, please don't buy a new car to do, you know, although no. <laughs> Jeffrey bought one, don't buy a new car to do right here. Okay. Look, if you have, if you're part time, you're buying a new car, you want to do a little bit here and there, I get it, but don't, don't, don't invest because you have no control. I mean, tomorrow we buy a nice car. Maybe Lyft gets rid of Premier or Black or whatever, like they did with Lux. Where is your control? Don't do it. Yep. Um, don't, 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 don't do it. Um, then you have a beautiful car that's sixty, seventy thousand dollars, and the only thing you can take is Uber X rides. I agree. I agree, and that's where the business is going. So, uh, yeah, sorry, EV drivers. I actually texted with Gabe, who's our EV guy. Uh, I saw Gabe last last week in Oakland. He picked me up at the airport. Thanks, Gabe. Thumbs up. He came to the event. The event was really good, Chris. Um, there were two Harvard MBAs on my left and then me. And then, uh, you know, they're all book smart, but they're not street smart. And certainly they're not drivers. So I, I think I held my own better than, uh, than most. Um, yeah, man. I don't know. I mean, another cut. Sorry. That's all I can say. Re yeah. Rides are in drive. Uh, stay Let tuned. We have some news coming up there. Uh, both maybe going into Minneapolis. 
Yeah, um, again, just remember to read the fine print. So if you have that one dollar EV incentive, the fine print is in there. Um, you know, with me being sick, I didn't put it in the slides, so that's why we don't have it. Um, but just yeah, and and you that. know what? This reminded me, by the way. You know how we took a victory lap last week, or before <laughs> last week when you were sick. You know, a lot of EV drivers for shaving were getting all those thousands of dollars, right? Yep. And easy come, easy go, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, shit, man. Sorry, people. I thank God I didn't buy an EV. <laughs> well, for <laughs> ride share. I, if you're going to buy EV, buy EV for, uh, you know, riding around and having a good time and racing with Ferraris and stuff. But don't, don't buy it to do ride share. Anyway, so next. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about why uh, why there should be some tougher background checks done on Uber teen drivers. Um, okay, I don't know if... Um, um, it's my ride. Okay, we're going to do a segment next week. Uh, Matt from Boston. Um, Jeffrey, you're here. I see you here. Um, we're going to do a huge segment next week about what why... You know, I finally figured out, Chris. Why, are, why is Boston the number one market in the country? Okay, I figured it out. And I'm going to do a huge segment and I'm going to actually invite them to come on for, you know, talk about it. The reason is Boston has a big, big, two background checks, two, not one paid by Uber, agreed by Uber. And that's all I'm going to leave it here. They may not, they may be the only market. They're not oversaturated. And that's why the highest earning Uber driver, which I did an expose on was also from Boston. So, you know, um, okay. This, I am hoping to God, okay, seriously, that this was some troll, okay, with, with I'm hoping that it is, but then I followed this conversation. There were like 500 comments. I put some of them up. I won't be able to see it, but Chris will. You know, we've been talking about Uber Teen a lot, and I'm against it. I op opted out, okay? This was a, this was, it was exactly like this on Reddit. All I did was take screenshots and put it up here. Um, this guy says, I'm a convicted sex offender. Uber automatically signed me up to drive kids on Uber Teen and sent me offers. You take over from here, buddy, if you can talk, read some of this shit. Uh, yeah, debate I, posting this for a while, but the good outweighs anything else. Hopefully this post helps prevent parents from putting their children in a possibly dangerous situation. I received two offers from Uber just to see if they would, in fact, send me requests. They did. They didn't do either trip, or I didn't do either trip and turn off requests after. First off, yeah. how the hell does he even pass the background check if he's a convicted sex offender? Um, he says it was, I read the whole thing. It was 500 comments, and people were like going bananas. Like, so this is why Uber teen needs more stringent background checks, CPUC, okay? I mean, seriously, we're putting like 12, 15 year olds in cars, um, you know, uh, hop, skip and drive. They have to go through a fingerprint check. My wife is on hop, skip and drive, uh, drug test, all that shit. I mean, Uber just said, oh, because our primarily our business with adults, that's why we don't have to have the same stringent background checks for drivers who are going to do Uber teen. I would love to, Damien. Uh, actually, you know, I can't say much about it because I'm already in the talks. Um, it, it, we're gonna make it happen. I, that's all I can say. Um, so yeah, this is this is bad Uber. I mean, they sell it as like um, our drivers are locally scanned. What does that mean? I'm not even sure. I I'm I, I'm I have Uber team. I, nobody asked me anything. I'm just an <laughs> ex driver with 496 rating. One day it showed up in my app a couple three weeks ago. So CPUC has to look into this. So I have actually placed a call to CPUC that I'm just going to call as a driver. I go, look, man, why is hop, skip, and drive being treated differently than Uber? I mean, hop, skip, and drive drivers have to go through hoops to be able to drive kids around. That's because CPUC says their business is primarily children. If Uber's business is primarily children, then they, they said we will have to uh, force Uber uh, for stricter fingerprint background checks and drug testing. I'm going like, yeah, but you guys gone, can't let a company like Uber who did billions of trips skirt around. A lot of unaccompanied minor issues exist. At least people who are going to do team trips should be, I think, checked better. So again, I'm hoping this guy's a troll. And he said that the reason Uber and Lyft allowed him because his uh, sex offender 
file is yeah, from like a uh, few years ago. In 2009, removed from the registry after 10 years in 2019. Offense was more than seven years old and won't show up on state or federal registries. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm hoping this guy's a troll. But why would he do this, right? And actually, some people gave him kudos saying that, you know, I'm glad you came forward and you did this. I'm like, I, 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 I mean, Thanks, I think, I think, thank you, Sabin. I think this is like a, um, what do you call these? Time bomb, right? Something, some bad is going to happen with one of these teens, and then we're going to read it in the news. And, and then I don't want to say I told you so because somebody's life is going to get ruined. Um, but, uh, yeah, CPUC, California Public Utilities Commission, and a lot of the agencies in other states. I don't know who regulates Uber, but uh, these teen trips are not kosher with me. Um, there you go. All right, so let's talk about the 7030 guarantee and some issues in the system. Yeah, I mean, look, man, I mean, I've gotten, Chris, you know, I've gotten so many of these trips, bro. So many of these screenshots. Please keep sending them to me. Don't be shy. I get overwhelmed certain days, but I look at all of them. And that's why we can figure these things out. Look, Uber, uh, Lyft came up with the Uber, Lyft came up with the 7030 guarantee after estimated external expenses which is commercial insurance okay uh, in and credit card fees um here's the deal these are all you know for the not the same driver but um they are identical screenshots but then it shows where how the differences are being looked at as far as the 70 30 goes so uh, this driver on the left two screenshots uh, he grossed twelve hundred and thirty one dollars and eleven cents he drove a thousand forty five miles uh, one day and two, you know, Lyft, by the way, why do we do, why, why one day and two hours? I mean, is, does it look less? No, just say, you know, 27 hours, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that is. Like, actually, that makes it look like he drove a lot more than 26 hours. Oh, I drove a whole day. I'm like, oh, that's a lot. Just change that. But long story short, passenger payments were $1,675. Are we giving money away today? We can give money away today if you want. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, let's give him 25 bucks. Um, 1675 66 was the gross passenger payments, excluding tips. Estimated external fees, $415.50. This must be California driver. Look at the <laughs> next line item, Chris. $442.18. Okay, just with those two line items. Okay, Lyft literally took half of it, sixteen seventy five, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going like, that's a little hocus pocusy, right? And uh, luckily he had tips and he brought him up to twelve hundred and thirty one. But my point is this: those two line items, Chris, it's are being played. And this driver, by the way, is going to get some money back uh, under the guarantee. Because the way Lyft looks at it is they deduct 415 out of 1675. You're left with 1200 ish. 442 is above the 30% threshold. And on Thursday, the following week, this driver should get an adjustment. And sure enough, right there, um, his earnings were at only 65% as opposed to 70. He should get a top off, okay, uh, of 5%. So in this case, it's working. But look at this. Look at these numbers they're taking out. They literally took out half of it in lift fees and external expenses. I mean, why are we paying for your external expenses, Lyft? I'm not even sure, but it is what it is. And then on the next two screenshots, $1,302 was the gross, one day and 18 hours. So what is that, 42 hours? Is that what I'm saying? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. And, and he drove 1,000 miles, so buck 20 a mile. Again, on this one, $1,900. And uh, look at the external fees, Chris. $661, bro. Basically a third. Yeah. 33% right there. What's happening? I don't know what's going on here. And then I have a very sneaky suspicion, okay, that in this case, they took a third of it out. But then look at the right side screenshot, Chris. List is contending that the driver made 93%. No. How's the 93%, bro? I'm sorry, but $1,300 by $1,900 is not 93%. It's not. Exactly. And, and, but that's because the after external expenses fees, 
$661. Okay. 83 trips this guy did. Okay. That comes to like uh, 7, 8, 8, 8 times 8, 64. Okay. So that comes to like $8 a trip. What is that, Lyft? Is that commercial insurance? I know the CC fees are in there. According to Lyft, it, it, it was. So this is the hocus pocus we have to deal with now. Okay. And I have a very sneaky suspicion to end on this. When the external fees, estimated external fee item is very high, like in this case, because they're taking that right off the top. You have nothing to do with it. Then the lift fee is going to be low. And they're going to have the balls to call to the driver and say, hey, look, you made 93%. Buddy, I made 93% of whatever the goddamn thing was left after 1900 and you took your 661 out. Mm -hmm. 661 uh, and no wonder drivers are get upset bro we know math here too people this doesn't look right to me i don't know what do you guys think you guys like the 70 30 hocus pocus i don't know man i don't know no because so anyway. ultimately it comes down to like 50 percent. it really comes you down mean, to about 100 percent. yeah 50 percent. that that's the take rate on the last two screenshots chris is right 800 bucks 1675 was the gross that's 50 percent on this one 750 was the gross and 1800 so they took 45 percent. so yeah they're taking about 50 percent. and uh does have irs check their cooked up books <sighs> bro they don't deal with the irs only drivers deal with the irs anyway so yeah, they, uh, they, please send me these remarks. please don't be shy send me these um and uh yeah i'll look at I'll look at it and show a few of them that i think are egregious like in this case, what the F, man? $661 lift. I'm supposed to pay for that? I mean, I did because you're paying me after you deduct that. Why am I paying you for estimated external fees? Why? Are you paying for mine? Are you paying for my insurance? Are you paying for my maintenance? Are you paying for my gas? For <laughs> uh, my just the whole I... focus world, bro. Yeah, look at Silver Fox. He goes, I made 112%. Yeah, after they took $700 of uh, external fees, probably. Yeah, I probably did. The only yeah. way to get there, by the way, is, Chris, uh, when you have like a ride challenge or something. That's when I'm seeing the numbers like really high for the driver. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's just bad. So, anyway, so um, yeah. yeah. Oh, All right, well, let's, let's give All away right. some money. All right, hashtag bucks of my money. Into the chat right now. And then uh, uh, I have one that's, yeah. Sure, good for you. Right here, Tesla Ride Chronicles. <laughs> uh, would love to see that. Send it to me, Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. Yes, we are, Robert. Excellently put. Congrats. <laughs> he said, See, the audience says it better than me. I we're paying for their business expense. Maybe they should pay for ours. That's why people want to be employees of these companies. You know, give me the car, I'll drive your car. You know, yeah. whatever. All right, so and we have right, a couple let's, more. Uh, let's Yep, let's talk about some uh our favorite. Our favorite fakes. Fake games. Take off. That's fake, right? You gotta believe that's fake. I don't know, but maybe it's Boeing. <laughs> Boeing actually is not doing well. Once the, <laughs> once, no, the not. once the tire fell off, one on takeoff <laughs> and another one window blew out. <laughs> I don't think Boeing's and doing then well. Then the whistleblower uh between um Blowing his whistles uh, ended up offed. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, so we have two this week again. You know, you know who you are. Uh, on lift, it was uh, Smacky, Smacky the Frog. The frog. <laughs> so I don't want to. Oh boy. So oh boy. imagine I get an email from Lift tomorrow. Says, "Search, that's a real name because in Sanskrit that means wealth and wisdom." <laughs> But like, yeah, well, I don't care. <laughs> Smacky the Frog. Yeah, yeah, Devo. That's it. That's a screen name. Smacky the Frog right there. And on Uber, <laughs> this week's candidate is Takeoff. I mean, I'll pick both of them up probably. I'm not saying this was better than Killer. Okay. Uh, so yeah. I don't, do that. I don't, I don't know. Like... I mean, the problem with picking up Takeoff, like I say, if that's Boeing, you might have a door that blows off. Yeah. And then we'll, so right? yeah. they might open the door like in the middle of the highway, and then all of a sudden somebody's coming up behind you and slams right into your door. Yeah, 
Um, so <laughs> streaming frames, there's a good one. Right, uh, we're ready to say bye to Uber, DoorDash of California. Ah, they're gonna have a difficult time to come here. Why don't you know? Maybe, maybe they can go to Minneapolis and take over. I mean, they have it in 20 cities. I don't see why rides actually. I'm being transparent now. I'm gonna talk to Steve. Um, I, I think this would be a perfect chance for an alternative to step up and play with the big boys. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they have the rate card, man. I mean, I think they're at the right spot um i honestly think they should step up put the big boys boots on and i know steve is steve can do it and he's he, i know you know he's a mean and lean company there um if i can make it happen bro i'm gonna make it happen um let's see one more for rides rides app charges 100 from a driver to use it before a month okay a driver gets 100 percent of it. Yeah, okay we know all these things he, okay so streaming frames uh steve was on like six months ago um yeah I, we agree yeah 100 percent um so we're gonna make it happen relax <laughs> streaming frames you must be a rise, rise driver um does rides allow drivers to s no but they will suggest a decent rate so it'll be a lot more than what you're getting now uber and lyft and you have commercial insurance p1 p2 p3 so you guys know unlike a couple other companies who are thinking about it um look it's a good setup it's a good setup I mean, I, I think we, we're going to make it happen, hopefully. So that's it. All right. Well, let's uh, um, give this right. away. Give me one second. Let's give him some money. How many of you came in? No, nobody came in. How many are we here? I don't even know what's going on now. Hold on. Okay. Last chance as MTMC. All right. Email me, Sergio, at the rideshareguy.com. Otherwise, within 24 hours or you won't get your money. 25 bucks coming your way. Um, Miami, Miami Joe. Joe. Miami Rats. Joe, email me, Sergio, at the rideshareguy.com. Otherwise, no Ooh. money. Miami Man, I, Joe. I, 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 I was wondering if I was going to start falling asleep like Biden. <laughs> you, you, you look like you're about to go. So uh, do we have anything else, buddy? No, I mean, I'm all set. Uh, I just want to say thanks for everybody last week uh, who reached out. There were quite a few, quite a few people who emailed out uh, asking how I was. Clearly, you can see still not great, um, but we had to champ it out for this week. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, things get better for tomorrow and moving forward from there. Um, you know, I got food poisoning last week and then I got sick on top of it. So I got some flu or something now. I, I don't know. But uh, it's like a roller coaster right now. It's just been up and down so yeah. uh um, i just so, want to say thanks to everybody who reached out and uh wanted to see how i was doing yep uh we can't do it without you so um see how much better things run and today was a, i think our fastest show i think we broke a, a wrong record <laughs> today so, probably so he's I gonna say now, why don't we do this every week now because i can't go that fast bro come on man. i forgot <laughs> half of the shit i was supposed to say <laughs> you mean fall up the steps <laughs> I, yeah, I gotta he, go up the steps after this, so maybe I will. Yeah, he's <laughs> not doing well. Uh, but he trooped it out. Give my partner a hand. Um, he's still coughing his lungs out. Okay, we, we have things called doctors, Chris. Time to go to the doctor, buddy. Okay. Uh, uh Gary, how are you? But you came in right at the end. So anyway, Miami Joe, 25 bucks. Yours, email me, Sergio to guy.com. Please. Is the curbivore thing in the show notes? Yep. Okay. Go to the link. There is a link called curbivore.co. Click on it. Mr. Gambit, you have to come to Curbivore. It's five bucks, Mr. Gambit. Okay. Um, click on the link, please. March 29th, Friday. I'll talk about it between now and then. Sign up, register. Otherwise, don't show up at the door expecting to get in. It's a great event. Free food. We're going to have a driver power hour between 1230. Have lunch together. Let's go. Show up in big numbers. Spend some of Harry's money. Well, there you go. <laughs> and, and after that, there's an after party. If you guys stay past 4.30, it goes from 9 to 4.30. And after party has alcoholic drinks. So you guys know. Um, invite your friends. Invite all drivers. Not just rideshare drivers. All gig workers. All welcome. Use Sergio, S-E-R-G-I-O-5. At checkout to get your $5 ticket instead of a $100 ticket. <gasps> okay. There we go. So, Chris, right. my man, feel better. Please go to the doctor. We don't want to see you like this. 
We'll see. Um, and then, um, okay, so it's time to say goodbye to everybody. Yep. Um, what time is Harry? Harry is not speaking, thankfully. Uh, I'm going to be on a panel, though. Um, <laughs> what else? Okay, that's it. So, um, yeah. That's it. All right. Goodbye. Please, so thumbs up. Your week, everybody. Thumbs up, please. We'll it's free. Week. Free. Oh, can I just one more minute, please? Please go to our website www.therightshareguy.com please please free it's free again we're getting all this free free subscription to our newsletter i'm writing i just wrote about minneapolis i wrote about the highest paid uh, uber driver in the country there's great stuff there please go sign up it's free you can't say no to free if you're driving an ev i'm sorry um uh, i didn't know that was coming and that's it so much love thumbs up please Helps the YouTube algo, supposedly. We'll see you guys next week. Next week, we have tax experts that we were going to have last week. Tax time is around the corner. All questions are going to be answered. These people will answer all your questions. So tax experts from Solo and Column Tax, tune in. All the questions you want to know about your write-offs, your how you should do it. I'm telling you, it's going to be a great show. So please tune in. So with that, we say bye, partner, feel better. I will keep up right. with you or check in with you later. Um, so that's it. All right. Have a good, good rest of your week, everyone.